All right, everyone. So we're gonna use uh, we're gonna apply the principles of animation to do a bouncing ball. Okay. So I'm gonna have a ball that kind of starts here and then it kind of bounces across the page. Okay. So I'm gonna start. Let's just define where the floor is. That's always helpful. And I'm just gonna draw a little line there. Okay. And Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw sort of a reference line. Or this is kind of like where my motion is going to be. So I'm going to have a ball that kind of starts here, and it's going to go boom, 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 boom. OK? Now, part of this is already using you know arcs which is like if a ball bounced, it wouldn't just go like boom, 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 like in a straight line. That wouldn't look particularly very realistic. So here it's like, I'm already using kind of arcs here. So let's, I'm just gonna lock this and I'll just turn this layer into like a 50%. You can actually affect the percentage. If you click on the layer properties here, which is here, there's this option that says opacity 50%. Okay. I'm going to draw a ball. All right, I'm just going to keep it pr pretty simple for the sake of this. So I'm not going to make it too complex, but there's my ball, OK? And the next thing I want to do is remember, we want to use slow in, slow out. So in theory, in terms of our drawing, there should be more drawings at the beginning and then, you know, and then when it slows, you know, and then it gains speed, so they're faster. And then as it bounces, it's slowing down. So there's more, there's less here because it's going faster. And then it's, oops, it's kind of slowing down and then it's speeding up and then repeat, repeat, repeat. All right, so let's try this out. So I'm going to come into, oops, I'm still in annotate mode. All right, so I'm going to, Keyframe and I'm let me make this reference line pretty far out. Same thing with the floor. So I don't have to keep going back to that. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna place it about there. You can kind of use, you know, onion skinning here to kind of help out. On the next one, that's where I'm probably going to start applying a little bit of squash and stretch. So as we said, if I start to stretch, I'm going to stretch it. And if I stretch it, I should really kind of do that. All right, so it's stretching, but I'm trying to keep the volume so that it feels the same. Next one. This is where it's going to squash. I don't really like that, but you know, whatever. Mm, something like that. Once again, it should feel like the same amount of volume, even though it's the height or the width is a little different. I'm actually gonna draw my own here because I kind of want to make like one that's a little more, let's make the thickness of the line kind of match up. And I'm gonna kind of like, you know, once again, the volume should feel about right. So it's like, if this is squashing out, it should be lower in height. All right, and then it's going to kind of bounce out this way. I'm actually just going to copy that. Oops. This one. And in terms of spacing, like I said, it should be pretty far up like this. And then what it's going to do, it's going to start to slow down and become more and more circular.
Now you could literally redraw this. I'm kind of a little lazy for this lab, but you know, to get a better, you know, that doesn't feel quite right. So you should start to get fatter. This is where maybe the ball starts to, you know, start to become more rounded instead of like an oval. And then this is where it's like a pure circle again. Okay. And then it's going to start to fall. So we still, we're still going to get kind of that same, you know, like this, where, you know, it starts slow. You know, so next one should be about there ish. This is where having like, you know, this can help be helpful. If you can look at your previous drawings, at least for me anyways, it's helpful. So it starts slow. Oops. Now the reason also, this is another physics thing in terms of spacing. The reason why this isn't bouncing as high is when the ball hits the ground, it's actually losing momentum uh, because of inertia. So that's why like it keeps bouncing lower and lower. If I had a bounce as high as it normally would, that wouldn't look very realistic uh, because of the way physics works. So once again, that kind of falls into the timing and spacing kind of situation there. All right, so next, maybe the ball's gonna start to kind of stretch a little bit here like that. Maybe not too much. And then some more stretching. Okay. And then it's going to hit the ground. And then it's going to squash. I'd add even another. That's not great, but I'd probably redraw it. But, you know, once again, I kind of want to have that kind of squash. Oops, it's got to be lower in height. Okay. Let's just take a look at what we got. Okay, you can kind of see the bouncing there. Maybe go a little too fast. This is another where we're timing might come in. I might come in and double up everything. But let me just finish this out. All right. Um, once again, you know, as this goes up, it's going pretty fast. So, you know, it's kind of going up. And then it's going to go back to being kind of circular again.
Try to make this nice. I might actually make this a little bit. Oops, is this wrong? Uh, whoops, I accidentally put two in one. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, let me fix that. Okay. Let me kind of elongate this too a little bit. All right, then starts to fall again. You're really kind of running out of time of space. It's really just kind of like maybe one drawing. And then it bounces, squash. I'm actually going to just do one squash because it's as it's losing momentum, the squash actually wouldn't be as intense because it has less momentum, you know? So it's not like, like if you have a lot of momentum and you hit something, it's like, boom, right? Like a car going 90 miles an hour hitting a wall. This is more like, so it's not as intense, you know, if that makes sense. All right. I'm just making sure that my objects are in the right. Okay, at this point now it's going to start to like slow down. Now it's going to like roll. And actually it's still speed, so it's like, it should go boom, 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 and kind of get closer and closer because it... it's slowing down with speed. All right, let's try this out. Okay. That roll actually isn't quite working for me. I think it's 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 losing too much. I, I guess I actually messed up here. So I actually I think it would kind of just kind of peter out. A little bit. So I'd have it slow down and maybe stop there. So it's always good to kind of go back and kind of adjust things. So I'm actually gonna get those just didn't look good. So let's go back and I'll fix that. So I'm actually just gonna have it kind of like slowly kind of slow down because it feels like it's gaining momentum somehow like it had like a rocket boost and that's not really how it should feel it should be a little farther it should be a little closer making these get closer for slow in slow out and then that can just be held I'd also play around probably with timing a little bit. So I'm going to take every keyframe and add a frame. I have a little keyboard shortcut for it. You can use F5. I set mine to the letter A because I don't have function keys on my um, laptop. Just to make this look a little... Now I'm doing this to make the actions not as fast. If you're wondering why I'm doing this. All right.
Okay, let's turn this off, play this back. All right, looks pretty good. Yeah, that's the floor. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. I think I have a double somewhere. Yeah, right there. I thought I fixed it, but I guess I didn't. Um, let's get rid of that, actually. So this is where, you know, you just want to, like, you know, think about the material. Think about, like, so I kind of like this. To be honest, if I went back, it's bouncing a really high there. I kind of don't like, I don't know. I just, somehow that feels a little bit off. I might lower that a little bit. Cause it's like, I feel like the momentum shift and that's, that's on me. Maybe this should be like a little lower, closer to that. I don't know. And this is kind of where you look at it and you decide if you're going to make any changes on things. So this is using squash and stretch to make the bow bounce look a little more natural. All right. So we have arcs, like the balls moving in an arc, which makes it much look a lot more natural. We have it slowing as it's speeding up and then, you know, has when it's faster, the the frames are farther between each other. But then as it slows down, the frames get closer. They speed up. I have a little squash and stretch. Okay, to give it a little more pizzazz. Okay. So this is actually what you guys are going to do for your homework. You're going to make two different balls, one a tennis ball which is kind of like this one, maybe a little faster, and one like a bowling ball. So it's not just, you know, we are using squash and stretch and all these other things, but you also have to think about the material, right? So if a bowling ball, you know, here I have a, this might be like a tennis ball in terms of its reference line, but if I was doing a bowling ball, maybe the bowling ball is kind of more like, maybe the bowling ball, because it's heavier, it would be like, boom, because it's not going to go as far, right? It's not as light as a tennis ball. And then it's, you know, because of the dense weight, it's not going to bounce as high, right? So it's like, boom, boom, boom. And then maybe it kind of rolls, you know what I mean? So we're thinking about not just, you know, arcs and things like that, but we're also thinking about like, how would the material react, right? If you dropped a bowling ball and a tennis ball on the ground, how would they be different? They're both spheres, right? They're both circles, so but they're not going to react exactly the same way. And so things like, you know, how far they go or how big of an arc or how fast they fall and stuff like that. We have to think about that, you know, how much they stretch too. Like if I, you know, in this case, my ball kind of does squash and stretch a lot because, you know, the rubber ball is a little more, you know, the tennis ball is a little more, uh, malleable, but something like a bowling ball, it should it should squash and stretch a little bit, but we don't want it to do it too much because then it then it feels like your bowling ball is made of like silly putty, right? And that's not what we want. We don't want the bowling ball to feel like silly putty, but we do want it to have a little bit of reaction. So I might do squash and stretch on it, but not as much. Okay, it would just be a lot simpler. Okay.